the hero. This is tiny position four we're talking about, so he's not gonna have his blink dagger. I like this is twenty. Maybe just they picked it for the game for some like super late game. Radiance buyer yeah. buys into Scotty against these heroes. It feels nice, especially against TA. But uh, yeah, doesn't doesn't strike me as that good of a Spectre game. Would, I, would I, Spectre I, ever go Orchid for a side? They can. You can. But yeah. Again, the Orchid kind of forces you to have to kill heroes. Right. Um, Which, I mean... You kind of need to, to yeah. in this game. I think late game, this puck is uncontested. And I don't think you win this game after 40, 50 minutes, assuming you're not ahead. Once puck gets like some Octarine, Arcane Bling, you know, like the works for items, it's he's going to just carry the game. Right. Yeah, I was thinking the Orchid, just, you can then jump the puck, have that yeah. orchid, have that silence, you have the follow-up maybe from, yeah. say, the Primal Beast. One thing that gives me hope if this game goes late is 25 on Viper. You know, become universal, one become of the, the biggest, <laughs> biggest memes in Dota at the moment. Like, when I first read that, I'm like, that's fake. That, that's actually not true. I thought someone's trolling. Is it as good as I think? It's, it's a good it, talent. It's really good. All right, because well, I remember doing, like, the math on it with a couple of friends and it was a group project so I wasn't really How helping. long did that take? No, they were doing the group. Oh, you, you were really just quickly. there you making coffee? It, right? Yeah. <laughs> <Stamped your name laughs> yeah, 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 I put my name at the top, teacher gave us an A+, plus. it was fine. And what are the math what was the what math? was the what was the answer? Yeah. The conclusion was it's good. It's good. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. I'm glad you just <laughs> agreed with us. We had to do math for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was math. I can't tell you exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I believe you. A squared plus B squared equals C squared or something like that, but I think you just needed to, you know, multiply by the number of damage, number of stats that you have on the hero to see how much damage you're getting. And that would be? And that would be well, it, you, yeah. do, you do one times agility or <laughs> 0.7 times yes. all the three stats. <laughs> Which usually there's, you have a lot more of three stats than of just agility. Not fun for Nisha at the moment. Yeah, this is honestly a good Viper matchup. So Viper is one of those heroes I think mid just don't like playing Gryus because you kind of just lose your lane a lot of the time. And so pretty much if the other team picks Viper. Thank you. Just tiny things. Yeah, I was about to say, there's no Monkey King in the game. You got yeah. two couriers I mean, real it's quick. It's no matter what hero he plays, I feel like he just <laughs> thinks about the courier. Like he just wants to kill it. Tree grab. DY already forced to use a healing salve in this lane. We did mention that uh, not the strongest lane by any means for extreme gaming. Brewmaster, you also have ways of igniting immediately with Rubik's Fate Bolt. Yeah. 33 going for the stats, a lot of stats early on. And Nisha. XM used all of his mana. Has zero mana. He's Does have mango, one though. mango, though. Yeah. I mean, this is... XM's like the Viper player. I don't think there's any other mids that really want to play this hero. Or maybe just are at all. But I think he's consistently played this hero, at least through this tournament. I'd like to see a team finally pick up that Huskar. There's been a few of those last phase ban Huskars. But I want to see it finally come through. Why do you want to see a Huskar? Because I'm... <laughs> An awful person, I guess. I don't. I have no idea. I think these Huskers and Vipers are just so... It's, even like the Dazzle to an extent. It's like this guy picks this hero and you don't even get to see fun mid lane. You just see one guy win the mid lane, the other guy not. I kind of want to see Huskar just so it does bad so my friend I play with stops picking it mid. Is it the same friend who was doing the math with you on this group project? No, no. It's somebody else. It's somebody who I got the block of cheese you with. You think a Huskar gonna... player would be doing math in a group project? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Come yeah. on. <laughs> let's think about the Huskar players of the world. He spams Lone Druid and Huskar, and I swear to God, I'm just losing my mind here. Wait, is that Gunner? Is Gunner your friend? <laughs> <laughs> or are we? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't play Huskar. I'm not, I'm not that low. Lone Druid's like one step above. It's, it takes a little more finesse. But another lane, T is doing well. I mean, it, they both play this exact matchup pretty much. They just played TA versus Primal last game, so they're warmed up. And mid, Nisha is doing a lot worse than last game. Uh, but nothing like terrible yet. It's looking kind of bad, but you know, the first few waves are Vipers like bread and butter. And Peng also needs, or Puck needs level three to kind of start getting the range creeps for free. Not fun going up to, against that Cinder Brew activation and immediate fade bolt. Tokinesis, Blood Grenade, Ame. Blood Grenade thrown right back, but Ame is low. Two One shots six. from dead. Oh, seven health. Just surviving with seven health. Oh, Still yeah. bad. Because the wave is kind of doubling up on them, so it's going to keep pushing the brew. And I don't think there's a salve coming at all. And so they're going to just be stuck. DY is going to pretty much careful. just CS. 
or die. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, that might be it. Try to bring a heal dive. himself. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a plan, it seems. But given a first blood, is it worth it? Sometimes it's, the, it's better to just die and get this healing salve, as you were saying. Just because they're not going to win this lane. I don't think when you pick Spectre or Viper, you should like expect to win the lane at all. If they get out even, it's like a great success. And so even just having to have your Phoenix feed for a salve just so the lane's a slight loss is probably the best you can hope for. Right. And that death doesn't have him TP mid to refill a bottle for Viper, but he's got at least one of the water runes. Yep. Insania might make a move. Like this Viper, he's always been, you know, this lane dominator from the mid lane. But you kill him once or twice, and if he's putting more points to dominate the lane, more points in Q, he can't really go back to jungle and farm. So he Did needs he to met? get something uh -oh. out of this. Boxy's here. Yeah, Boxy Grenade. and Insania's here. Zing so is coming Zinq over. Q. Avalanche onto the Enchantress and XM. Surviving for now, but eventually falls to Boxy as he'll get the trade. But no XP for him. Unfortunate that there's no experience there for him. Zeke he will take over the experience here for just a moment, for 12 seconds more. So Insania, he has that Warpine Raider. Nisho still has a really rough game in terms of gold. He's uh, the lowest core. He's pretty much just at Enchantress's gold. So he's going to have to claw back into this game, kind of opposite of last one. And XM, I think, if it wasn't XM, I would be worried about that death in terms of, you know, it's a Viper, you die in the lane, it feels really bad because you're going to be behind. But I think he's really confident just scaling or playing really fast. He, he kind of knows his hero, right? It's like anytime you know a hero, the situations don't really scare you as much, whether you're winning or losing. I think Insania might do. stick to this mid lane, but if they think he's going to do the same, they might put put some more pressure on to make a... Well, grenade connected, they do you also have here, as well. here. But look at the mid lane. Fraction, Mickey getting low. They're wrapping up. XM, wrapping around. He'll onslaught and they'll get that kill on a Mickey. They use the glyph. XM's gonna die. XM, he's in trouble. Waning Rift, Silence, Illusory or Blands, and XM ooh, gonna die to Boxy. Close. And that is back to back deaths in the mid lane. So now XM. He's also slowed down, but he's still ahead of Nisha in terms of net worth. They can stick around. Puck is going to be level 6. He has the power rune available, so with one more rotation from Insania, picks up the creep. I'm not having a game at the moment. But they got the tower. This is pretty big. So this also means that uh, Jin Q can make a move. They're not going to go through the gates. So it will be a TP Jesus, rotation. Roof, fade bolt. Ame low and burning. That right click though does it. Boxy's got another kill. He's on a killing spree. He's Why did you mess up the carry player of this team? You said burning. He retired a long time ago. Yeah, I should have said Sylar instead. Sylar to fall. <laughs> Liquid are doing it in this game. And they're going to take the mid tower. XM is in the awkward position where I don't think he has any points in his W, which is no. a farming spell. And as and we said, he has no mid tower. So. Where do you go with this Viper? That's always going to be a problem. And Puck is now ahead of him. Nisha getting the last hit on the tower. They might still get a kill. Like, I could still see them diving. Yep. A level 5 on Viper. I have never seen, well, except for one game recently, I have not really seen Ame have a, this bad of a start. He's I got nothing. It's, I think it's just a combination of Phoenix and Enchantress. But I think the really big story of this game so far has been Enchantress. Um, it's the first phase hero, and you kind of know this hero will take towers in the early game. Uh, you know, you lose your tier 1 top or tier 1 mid, and you're like, oh, it's okay, it's an enchantress. He takes towers for free, whatever. But it's when you pick this Viper, and he still does it to you, and you lose all this pressure, and now he's going to go top, they're going to kill the oh Phoenix. gosh, and yeah. It just feels like Insane is kind of running the map right now. They're moving around real well. 2k net worth lead here for Liquid. You've got at least XXS at the top of the net worth, but... Can they even do anything? <sighs> Who's going to make the moves? Like, they need level 6 on Ame. They need XXS to make something happen. And then they can go for the kills. You also have Brewmaster, 33, who's having a blast of a game. Double Bracer into Vlad. So they want to pressure some early tower, have some extra mana region. Vlad is just a really solid item right now. They buffed it, so the price of it's just really cheap. You could disassemble it. It's also, I think... I forget the exact math. I did this once, but there's you know a lot of math. Was it with the yeah, friends, yeah, yeah. or did this, you do it alone? Yeah, this is in our friend group. Um, but it's one of the better DPS items on Brewmaster because you you know you can't really increase the damage of his ult yep. a lot of ways. There's like radiance, but Vlad's is actually one of the better ways, especially now that it's four pandas. 
it adds up, you know, a lot of damage numbers. And it makes them tankier, which is an issue for them early game. Yeah, you said the disassemble mechanic, but I don't remember seeing anyone, like, do it. Because, like, what's the component? Maybe on Morphling you get, like, Satanic uh, and stuff, but... On other... Mars, people do it for Satanic AC late okay. game. Um, on Brew, he'll probably just keep it, like, the whole game. He's passed, but now <laughs> in trouble. Avalanche toss, running away, nice but Mickey is here. Dream Coil committed, Fade Bolt, Boxy, sniping one. Not sure he needed to Fade Bolt take it, but why not? That's the, the, the benefits of being a Rubik. This kill's really important. Onslaught, Trample, Pulverize with the Sunray, and 33. Ooh, Will he up. die? He was going through the rift. Ooh. Did he die? Oh, I think a bit of a lag, I actually. He, he, he should be able to get the I, split I off. I think actually there's a chance he was trying to not split. Just he, hold it to yeah, fight had, again. Yeah, he had opportunities to split there. Um, so he's pretending that he's going to use the split and doesn't, and they're like, okay, we need to back off. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I think he's just trying to outrun because they kind of used all their chase. So... Maybe maybe he'll just spam R. I don't know. We'll see. I think he should live. I think, you know, one way or another, he should live. Whether he just runs or he presses split. Um, he should be fine. Nothing will happen to him. Looks like everybody's getting a good stretch in. I mean, it was clicking a lot of buttons there. I don't know what he was doing compared to everybody else. Trying to get level 6 to snipe that Brewmaster, probably. Still, yeah. His game is... Interesting, because he purchased out that urn, mm -hmm. and he's Zero not charges. Really, yeah, he's not fighting. I think he has one. He died. Oh, yeah, okay. So. That, that's good. That's a good way to die. One of the best ones. If you're about to die, get yeah, Urn of Shadows. Yeah, or give it to someone before people were doing that, you know, pass the Urn of Shadows so you get the charges. Hm. You get two, though. Yeah. Be nice to grab it. Oh, oh, he died. He died. He did die. So if you had die in the chat, yeah, you're, you're correct. I feel like everybody spams it, dead okay, or not. It was a brutal death. We did not want to show this yeah. one on stream. Yeah, we censored it. It's fine. Uh, I honestly think he's, it's better for him to not use split there. I think him using split just makes it so there's two minutes where they can't just full dive extreme, and extreme gets to like play it. Maybe they take this mid tower with a wrap. And him dying, he just respawns, and he's going to take the map back. Like, he'll just push the specter out again, and nothing really changes. Avalanche, somewhere. To the side there by ZQ. These supports on the side of Liquid are ultra farmed. He's not even they do not it. have Dream Coil. They'll go after XM. Sunray is not going to keep him alive. They throw a Centaur at the Phoenix, so he's forced to stop the Sunray from saving XM. He'll right click and throw out that ult, but nothing doing. No follow up. They do not have really much to follow up on that. Didn't even use the split there, so they can still pressure in terms of. Or coil. Yeah, in terms of lockdown, uh, they need to commit. Like, we've seen them use three heroes to try to get a kill on 33. And he's still very survivable. Jean Q, not really having a blast of a game himself. Sitting at 500 gold, 11 minutes in. At least he found a good neutral item. Like, I think in recovery mode, you want to find this arcane ring. I think the, the second, but maybe the best one is trusty shovel. So you can get some, you know, healing cells, get some... Uh, Get some extra gold going. Ame, level six. Two charges in that urn, and he is going into the Orchid, so. I think for Extreme right now, they kind of have to accept that they're not going to control the mid lane, which really sucks in Dota right now. If you ever have to concede the mid lane and just not play there, it feels super bad, especially with a hero like Viper. Ooh. Going for it. Enchantress is here, Ame. Wanting to play that aggressive, Jaunt's back off of it. Nice oh, land. Onslaught, on. good kill on a two. XXS gets the double. That was, that's huge for ZinQ as well, getting him much closer to that blink. I mean, XXS is their like saving grace. Yeah. Top net worth above even the TA, and he just gets his double kill. He's gonna have to kind of do a lot of the heavy lifting. And he's playing bot, and I think Extreme should try to play more to these side lanes and just like running a toss. They're on top of him. Pulverize Supernova. They'll have an avalanche to follow this up, keeping him stunned. Refraction they in five. They use the taunt, bubble. but the Supernova goes off. Not They've enough. got the onslaught. They'll get the kill to make A. They Can look they over at the rest. Insania here with Boxy as well as Nisha. Dream Coil. Ooh, I have, I, that missed. And XM is going to be able to be a deterrent so they don't continue to chase. Bit of a misplay there with the Dream Coil. 
Seems like they thought they don't have enough damage to kill this Primal Beast if they coil him, so... They went for the Phoenix. Went for the Phoenix and didn't even get it in the end. This was a like massive last one minute for extreme. Three kills back to back. You also forced, what was that, three TPs into yeah. their own tri-camp, which just means now everywhere's just react. free to just push lanes out or you just farm. You either can go for another gank, you can just farm, you can kind of do anything, and it's up to you, yeah. which is the best feeling in Dota. When you get to choose everything to happen for the next 90 seconds, Look at this, Jin Q. He was struggling. One, two big kills. Because he was involved in like uh, three of those kills. TP's bottom, gets some farm priority, gets a stack going. Suddenly, he's going to have like 14 and a half minute blink, 15 minutes, which is still very good. Yeah, it's really good. And also, there's ancient stacks. So the Primal Beast is going to get the Shivas done. And the Shivas going to be really strong. With the Shivas, he can, I think, also just kill the Brulings. Mm -hmm. Just like once he commits in, he can kill them. Or just the TA Puck get one shot, I think. Specifically, the Puck will get one shot by a Shiva's charge. Ags for XM looking like the first one, our first item here for him. That's the scaling choice. It scales really well with Manta. You pretty much just turn into like a Naga. You just cut the waves with the corrosive skin. Um, you know, better than corrosive weaponry, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but Which? He's, he's playing to recover in a sense. He's not playing. I think when he plays faster, he goes Mage Slayer. He'll go like Mage Slayer Dragonlance yeah, yeah. and tries to run at heroes. Because um, Mage Slayer ends up being really crazy in Viper. You get like 70% magic resistance it's with nuts. the talent. It's, you don't take damage. <laughs> but because his game, I think, is really bad, he just needs to play for a later timing. Like a two item timing, a three item timing. His game's kind of bad, but you start to look at it, he's not that far behind Nisha now. Yeah, but Nisha also has a bad game, right? Like, True, but... Maybe it's relative. Yeah, yeah. It could be relative, but it's not a good situation for them. Um, especially because their Spectre's down there, too. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. just have these, like, two big cores. Like, usually you want your min or carry to have good games, at least one of them. But when both of them have bad games, it feels like a lot of it's on this primal to run around the map. And so far, he did a great He's job. He's been doing great. He's been doing what he needs to do. He's got a great amount of farm. Holding on to dust, so he's already prepped to kill this Templar Assassin. He gets a jump, and the TA is going for a different item build compared to the previous game. Just picked up that Deso, as we said, needs a little bit more right-click damage, needs that extra burst, and it will also open up the Roche for them if they want to play it in the top part of the map. But for now, it's going to be Puck. Uh, but with Deso, amplified damage on Puck, Vlad's Brewmaster. This always looks <laughs> so funny. I it. heard Onslaught, but yeah, Avalanche comes in on a two. They've got the silence. Tokinesis doesn't oh, snap the coil, but they'll still get the kill on Ame. Boxy. And he's going to try and kill himself There's to no neutrals, way. but the tree toss will get the kill, and Mickey will tip Nisha. Amplified damage is a crazy run on a lot of these mids. Nisha just does so much damage because it's more spell damage on Witchblade, all spells, and. If he does, I think if that was the old DD, he probably lives on Spectre. I don't think he would die just uh, right-click damage from Puck. Yeah, most definitely. Mickey is going to be farming the triangle and shifting towards the top. Try to take this Roshan early on. I don't know if they could just like straight up commit to it. Cause... Yeah, it's hard into Phoenix yeah. and Primal. They have like, these heroes to just kind of commit in and when the fight's in this really small area of the map, it's. I think it's, it favors extreme a lot. I hear an onslaught. That one's a primal but, beast. Yeah, they, I was thinking Ooh, the same thing. The yeah, they've got the stun. They'll stop the pulverize. 33 on the run. Was that a neutral or no, was, it was that insane? Uh, insane. Yes. Okay. It was a pre-placed centaur. Just kind of following the the brewmaster. I think insane is on point today. Like yeah. Both his oracle in the first game and now his enchantress. And he's he, super farmed. Yeah, just runs around the map, gets his mid tower, gets the top tower, and he's playing really well. Yules is going for the puck before even a blink. I think he sees the orc being built by yeah, Spectre, so there it is. doesn't want to get countered. Onslaught. There's the jump from Shield Ame. Rune. He's Orca actually finished. the one who gets hit by that Onslaught. Now bumped into the air. They've got the avalanche. They'll look for the kill. They get the kill on Anisha as well as Boxy. Ame with a double kill. And just like that, as his net worth is As soon as they picked up that Orchid, perfect timing pretty and much. Even with the rune. Shield Rune, they still managed to get the kill. A DY shows up in a fight. Sunray drops the egg just in case. I mean, their team fight Avalanche is much stronger. Back. They're going to have another, and if Ami gets this, I'm, he's fully recovered. Oof. There's going to be so many breaks in this game. Primal Beast will be getting Aghanim Scepter later on. You have Viper on your ulti, which is much better now when, yeah. when it was on Nether Toxin. 
Also pierces BKBs. Yeah. It's really good versus TA late game. Even no matter what she does, she can't get side blades off if you just alter. And nose dive is online. Nose dive is online. Goes. He's going for the Manta next, which is. I think it's just a pretty standard build when you go Hags. It mm -hmm. gives you Dispel, which is nice versus like Pucks and TAs, but also just Cutting Waves. And I think Cutting Waves is really important. Just having go Shove or just ways to push it out, especially with the Spectre. You want the enemy team to show at all times. Yeah. And the easiest way to do that is to kill lane creeps. Okay. So we'll see how they approach this. Nose Dive's cast range is really short, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not great. Yeah, it, it's, it's not quite that good. Tiny. I've tested it with the, what is it, Seer Stone and Aether Lens. It's still not good. <laughs> they had the toss back, but the Centaur creep. Now it finally dies, stealing Onslaught again. So we'll have to be weary about when we hear a roar. I wish they had made a brand new voice line like of, of Rubik, of Rubik roaring. Or something. Yeah. Do you think Ringmaster will say amplify damage or double damage? Uh, for now, it's going to be double damage. You think so? Yeah. I, I don't think that's fixed. I don't think we thought about that. Ame. Orchid. On to Brew. They're jumping in. They've got Nisha going. They have some of that save. Ulti thrown from XM on to 33. Does have the split. They're trying we to force it out. We haven't seen the split yet, though. No, yeah, not I want yet. Them to Onslaught. Fight okay. on the side of Liquid. I think that they should have taken fights earlier with split, like force more kind of team fights. But now that the Viper has this Ags and the Primal just has, you know, having such, has such a good game, that I think it's a little too late for them to take these fights. And 33 realizes it. XXS also losing the last piece on that Eternal Shroud. His courier Sorry. dies, so that's not going to be out for another minute 45. Still recovery mode here for Extreme Gaming, but the difference between recovery mode on, on this one for Ame and games in the past is he got a couple of kills and was involved a bit, right? That's still the lowest network core at the moment, but uh, he will catch up. He tends to be like more active now. I believe he's level 12, so ulti is 50 second cooldown. With this Orchid, you have good vision coming out from Primal Beast rushing in with Shiva's guard. And uh, Jin Kyrus? He wants to scale. A, a big fan of this item build on so Tiny. When things are slowing down, you want to scale. And picking up Hand of Midas will allow you to get more items. Like this guy blinks in. He's going to get lifted by Rubik. He'll get coiled. What's a four staff going to do? Fair enough. Coil breaks. They've got the silence. And Ame is dead. He shows himself a little bit too far with no help. But compare that to a Midas into a BKB. You know, this tiny gets a BKB, blinks in. Now what? Now he's a strong. I guess tiny. he has to be your initiator, right? I was thinking, does yep. he go Midas damage tree volley? I think he's probably. Good. I mean, he might go damage uh, later because the the viper and the primal can kind of like pseudo run in for him. But I honestly think him just going blink BKB to just. You think BKB straight up? Yeah. Okay. I think you just blink BKBs. You just come in into a fight and walk away because. Tiny is often, especially in this kind of game, I think the second round of spells is the fight winning one. Yeah. Like maybe you toss a guy in, forces BKB, or you avalanche on them. I'm but fine with Yules still. Like, you're going to farm that Yules. I can see a Yules too. Yules that was what okay. Boxy did last game. He it's went just, Wind Waker pretty it's straight up. It's not his chat. Like, imagine he's <laughs> paused for Tiny with a BKB. It feels cool, you know? And I think he's a cool player. Yeah, BKB. So, wants to feel so cool. BKB, BKB and Radiance, yeah. Manta. Blank, blank in, you know, have Manta style, burn them with Radiance. Just imagining ZQ <laughs> blinking in, BKBing. He's chatting. He goes for the mewing. Just mm -hmm. a little blink, BKB. Game pretty even. That's it. In terms of net worth, but uh, XXS, he's really feeling himself. There's that shroud. It's good read on the Roche contest for Extreme. I think Liquid just walked there, but Extreme was already like pre smoking just to counter them. And so now Liquid doesn't get this Roche timing. Uh, XXS. He's fine. He's like, he's borderline unkillable. He's uh, having That's when fun. he dies, though, is when you say that. He's yeah, borderline unkillable, yeah. and then boom, but he's But even in dead. the first game, I think he gets to play, like, the really fun version of Primal, where you can't die. They're going for walking people. Again. Oh, he's oh, baiting no, not, it with uh, the man. wolf. Come no, on, don't uh, you want this gold? He reads it. So juicy. <laughs> oh, they might. No, he's fine. Huh? Really good read by Alme to just know that something's happening. I don't think that was even a scan. Double hey. silence for the puck. Read it well from Ame, but now he jumps Mickey's into the fight. In. They've got the Dream Coil. He'll jump forward. Mikke TP's out. And they've kept ZQ alive for a little bit as they took out Nisha. They'll get the kill onto Insania. So 
Ame reads it right, backs off, and then finally jumps in when the fight pops off. Ame had over Wolf there. He saw that uh, Wolf, and he's like, yeah, I got to counter it somehow. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, the thing is, XXS didn't also use ulti, not the longest cooldown ulti, but tells you a lot about the state of the game. Like, they blink in, they only lose Tiny, and uh, let's check Tiny. Let's see what he's thinking, what he's cooking in terms of neutral items. He's probably thinking, not I'm a rock. Nothing. He just wants gold. Yeah. I am a rock, and I am Tiny. That's the thought process. Do you guys like you queue like the two items in advance at the start of the game? Like, do you queue like yeah, five things? Yeah, yeah. Even in a losing game where I feel like it's over, but I I'll like get to... all these items. Yeah, because it's it's a, you know I try to lift myself up. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're gonna be able to defend if we're losing 50k, but still, you know, want to have that PMA mentality. Yeah, it's like your team's like, oh guys, are we close to any items? Do we need to wait before we fight? And you're like, yeah, I just need to finish my BKB, my Ags, my Daedalus, <laughs> and then and then we can go smoke, guys. <laughs> I'm already tilted at that point. XXS finishes Blink Dagger, so now he can kind of take this uh, initiation roll. Again, he can't really die. Like, there's nothing to kill him. I think, if anything, he's just going to get spam lifted by the Brew in the fights. Like, that's their best bet at, quote-unquote, dealing with him. Mm -hmm. And so, Liquid right now, they need a burst. I think Phoenix is their best fight start. Or the Viper, but it's, it's getting to the weird point where you can't jump them easily. If you jump the wrong target, you just get blown up. I awesome. think they really need Aegis on Liquid. I think they need to be able to, like, have Aegis on the TA, Blink on the Viper, trade Aegis for the Viper, and right. then also Egg, and then reset after the Egg Viper. And yeah, that's what I was thinking about when they were down towards bottom. I thought they were going to go and get themselves They were Roche, trying, but... and Extreme is doing a really good job of kind of any time that they see Liquid wants to be there. Oh, this is big. This is actually massive, taking the yep. Aegis away from Templar Assassin. Nose diving on Taro. I don't think Liquid's going to respond to this. I don't think they, 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 they have to give it at no. this point. They lost the area. And have we still seen a split yet? No. They scanned it and missed, by the way. And there it goes. There it is hitting. So Aegis picked up for Ame. Not fully recovered on Ame yet. He's still 4,000 net worth behind this TA. Obviously, TA sideways making it mm -hmm. much Dyer's easier to farm. But attack. Manta, Orchid, Urn, now an Aegis. Not too shabby. Yeah, it feels like the lane. in a decent spot. Yep. You're getting pushed out at level three, basically. Yeah, I am worried just for Liquid in terms of this Brewmaster. I think the Brew hasn't had the impact that they wanted to. When you are uh, when you have this 18 pick on first pick, it's kind of your best pick of the whole draft to an extent after this first pick because you see four heroes and you get the instant response counter pick and you get to ban two heroes right after it. And I don't think it's really... It won the lane. Uh, which is, you know, always a good thing to win your lane, but he he got counterpicked, right? It was a Spectre oh, 24. Oh, stop that long TP. Ame comes in. Now they've got the Orchid. We finally see a split out of him. Onslaught pulverized. No, he won't. So he'll be dead. Great XXS enough. gets the kill. Jean Spectre Q, now read. looking defusal. Yeah, this is not the side of the map you would expect them to farm, you know, mm -hmm. close to your base uh, near your tier 3 tower, but uh, he finds him. And what did he steal? Just the dagger. Spectral dagger. So, yeah. He's looking for Blink Dagger. Midas on Insania. I've heard this one before, where if you see a support in the enemy team go the Midas, you should go the Midas too on your team. Because you know the game's going to get clowny at some point, and it's going to go late. And if the other team has like a support with the Midas or two supports with Midas, and you guys don't, your supports just have no impact compared to theirs. Hmm. So I think to an extent, he saw Zen Cube buy it, and now he's going it. And I actually like it. Avalanche toss, Sunray ah. on him, Nature's him, Attendance, guys. and he's dead. So the Midas will take a little bit longer. He'll get there, though. Like, this is uh, one of those games where you can, like, scale on Enchantress, especially if you pick up that Midas. He's also having good of a game right now, but you're going to be playing into a lot of magic damage, uh, Primal Beast, double break mechanic relatively early on. Shard so four. you can't really carry the game on Enchantress as much as you would like to. Viper, yep. XM, he's been in recovery mode throughout the whole game, and he's in a good spot right now. Manta style, boots of travel, going for a BKB next. Has Zinku queued up what he wanted? After that, Midas? Yeah, just gold. the straight BKB, Chad. Maybe he just wants gold. Chad Q. Axe, <laughs> uh, yeah. Bots. So, all right, cool. Okay. Bots, Axe. So it is going to be the tree volley. Well, 
I don't know. He queues up a lot of items. We'll see. What Sometimes I feel like up. he knows we're looking at his items, and he'll just queue up one. something. No, yeah. no, he's committing. Is he? Yeah, well, <laughs> is he maybe. committing? He got could the ogre be axe. Could be, yeah, could be, could be ankle saber. You don't know. <laughs> I, I do think Axe is probably more up his alley than a BKB, though. Um, that we said in the previous game that we want to see him scale because yeah. he was not buying any scaling items in the previous one. So, yeah, Midas, bots, favorite item. Like It's like he's playing the mid lane. And now going into Ags, so... I always type in bots into the search bar in the um, shop. Does it work? No, because it, it's only B-O-T, and then the second you put the S in, nothing oh. shows up. It's very frustrating because I call them bots all the time. I'm just like, bots. It's like, maybe you should do like apostrophe S, because like, <laughs> 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 so Diffusal picked up for Ame. He still has the Sages for a minute 20. Silver Edge. We've talked about not liking the build up to this item as much. Break great against Spectre yeah. Viper. Yep. Looks really nice, it's, but... It's a really good pure damage item now. Because smokes are breaking. Blink in, Pulverize. That's going to be stopped by the Waning Rift. Look at the damage death. on XXS. The stolen Pulverize. They get the kill on XXS. It's Boxy gets credit for that kill. They're, They're focusing the eggs on the Ame. They'll take the egg. DY's dead. Right clicks in. Boxy low. One more shot. Can he die? Zinku's already in with the Waning Rift. The right click's coming oh, out from Nick. Once it. again, Zinku ends up falling. That's oh, three years out of the, the side of the so Ame needs to run, but the Melt Strike, he'll take out the Aegis. So, Viper on the run, back into form. Can they get anything out of this one? The Sunray, they look for the right clicks. Ame in trouble, he's on the front lines, pops that Manta. Silence still, right clicks from the Impetus. This is insane, you're doing a good amount of damage. Melt Strike, XM trying to TP, but they've got the Eagles up into the air, and they'll get themselves another. That's a full team wipe. They bought back on the Phoenix, and Liquid have blown the doors open on this Mickey one. Mickey went full ham in this fight. I think this is like this six, is, seven thousand six damage here. coming out from him. Yeah, he's not getting out of this one. Oh, they've got the silence with the shard from the traps, and it's a triple kill for Mickey. And all of a sudden, the game was even. 10,000 net worth lead. 12 Deso charges on Mickey from the previous fight. Enchanted Quiver, and they burst down XXS immediately. Tunisia was so ready with that Waning Rift to stop it, and Egg in the middle of a fight. Like, you can see the brawlings uh, that they've done one hell of a job, you know, just controlling the fight. Also, XM, like, he's going for Puck. He's trying to get him killed with the ulti, but it's not enough. They split the fight real nicely. This was also the first usage of the split throughout the whole game. He's a really awkward start to the fight, whereas Prima just goes in and gets chunked. I feel like his, the target he jumped wasn't that good. It was just a Rubik, not like the Brew or the Puck or anything. And it didn't really give an opportunity for Ame either, because as long as he jumps like a big important target, like a core, I think Ame would just instant jump and follow up. But since it's a Rubik, they don't really want to use everything on him. So it felt very disconnected at the start. And it ends up being connected in Graves. They all die. So. And what was that, the first split, right, still? I think? Yeah, the game. Yeah, so it was. Very successful split. split. No? All leading up to this one, so... You probably need a BKB on Primal right now, so you don't get stunned. They don't have anything if you have a BKB. It's like, yeah. not the item you want to buy early on. Thankfully for Primal, it's really easy to protect your ult versus Rubik. You can just press your E or your W even during the ult. So... I think it's it's probably a good idea for him to go BKB and just blink in BKB ult someone and then just protect it from the Rubik. Because uh, outside of Primal again, they don't really have the greatest jump. It's just the tiny in the Primal and the tiny. You know, once he gets his Ags, he doesn't really want to go first. Yeah. He wants to get a full tree volley off, so it's going to be a lot on him to do pretty much everything to an extent. Nisha is pretty massive now. The owner, uh, a neutral item has uh, Defiant Shell. Agatum Scepter, Amplified Damage, and going into Mjolnir, so he wants to scale. Like, this is uh, no shard, though. A little bit surprised. I'm glad he's going Maelstrom as his, like, fifth item. Have you played with Pucks going Maelstrom before Witchblade? No. Yeah. Rush the Maelstrom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a good time. But the new Puck scales really well with the way that the Ags works, and it still hits the stun targets from Coil. And the new shard, it gives you, like, what, 30 35. damage a hit? 35? Yeah. And so, just really high damage that comes out from Puck. In addition, just no stuns from Extreme. So the Puck will scale like really nicely into this game. Right clicks in. Starting to, this was 9,000. Like, Extreme are farming well. They yeah. cut it back 3k. You've got now the Shard on Zinku. So, I mean, his farm's kind of getting a little bit out of control, but nothing too crazy. 
it's kind of just the specter effect. When there's a specter in the game, you don't want to... Oh, that's a scary glyph, actually. They don't have a tier 2 top, which means this glyph is their tier 3 glyph. So, glyph won't get refreshed, and Liquid could actually go high ground if they really want to. A Roche respawning. Maybe they want to poke a little bit, but it could be yeah. risky, and it's going to be... But even Roche now, they Radiant get a fast side. Aegis. Like, if they kill the Roche right now, the high ground is just open for them. Yeah, it's being pinged. Can you fight this if you're extreme? Go to the Roche. To an extent, you want to. I think whenever you have Viper and Phoenix, you kind of want to be able to fight every Roche. The question is, will they actually get there in time? Mm, doesn't I seem like. They won't. No. And Mickey also opted to go for a BKB. Like you did mention that the yeah, he's they, they want to get those damage as fast as possible, sometimes skipping a BKB, but he understands that he needs to deal the damage and will pick up the Aegis for himself as well. I think they should keep committing the smoke. Top lane's pushing in, mid lane's kind of pushing in for them. And so someone on Liquid might, you know, mess up and show top. So as long as you kind of commit to the smoke, even if you don't like full in, run in just blindly, um, you can randomly get a kill after people rush. Silver Edge is flying out for Mickey. Has to get the Demon Edge from the secret shop, but the recipe is on that courier. He's going in. Nope, he's scared. <laughs> gem on the primal. He's he's the gem. See if that works out for them. Shard now picked up for Puck. Boots of Travel being built there for the Brewmaster as well. There's an Aether Lens for Rubik. Still, did Tiny commit to the Axe? I would assume so. Uh, Primal's getting it. Looking for a drop. Yeah, Primal's going to take his Axe. Tiny won't yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to buy it. <laughs> Rolls up into the air. Avalanche landing on a three. Jumps away, but telekinesis and stealing the trample. They've got the I'm silence the XXS this. pop of the BKB. Ame made the jump in, and now they've got the dream cool down and around onto two. Supernova's and coming in. 33. He already used that primal split. He'll be fine to reform, and that's the supernova going off. He's gonna come back to form in just a second. The stun is out onto the Phoenix, who already used pretty much everything. They get out of this fight. Ame's off into the trees. He's trying to get away with the Spectral Dagger. The OC is going to be used by Axam, but the Enchantress goes there. Nice KB being from 33. Now. Cyclone onto Ame, keeping him isolated from the rest of his team. Ame needs to run. Sunray's going to be used again by DY, but Cyclone once more. He's up in the air, XXS, he's really low, up on the high ground. They go with the Spock, who's trying to put out the damage with the Waning Rift. They get the kill on Ame, and they'll take out this Spectre. Gone for 70 seconds, no buyback. They've got an Aegis. They don't have a glyph on the side of Extreme Gaming. They can push the high ground for free. Really awkward fight for Extreme. Like they were forced to use this BKB on Primal, already down to half HP. Doesn't want to commit to a fight. They do get a coil afterwards and uh, they commit. They do have Aegis. And then you have also Brew who kind of controlled the whole fight. This was the second split, I believe. And uh, every single time we see the split Very being high used, value splits. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. The broken he was stacking the, the splits. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the Rax. This is the final glyph for the game for Extreme in terms of like being refreshed. And look, we can just kind of maybe even go for another side after this. They still have the Aegis. Oh, nice yeah. lift. Avalanche lift. Avalanche stolen under his feet. Not going to connect, but they've got the Dream Coil. Great now Zinku's in trouble. He's already dead. He doesn't have buyback. They'll go for the rest. They take up the Aegis out of the hands of the TA. Nisha off to the side with the BKB running out in just a second from XXS. Oh, the Avalanche the once again coming Avalanche. out from Boxy. XXS on the run. One health left. He just heals up and not going to be enough. So XXS ends up falling. XM trying to fight, but the break is there. They get the kill. They'll take the Viper. He doesn't have buyback again. Ami trying to do all he can. But they're I, going don't think, for the I don't think he can hold. Yeah, the throne's going to be exposed if they're not too careful. The tier fours are vulnerable. They still don't have a glyph. And this might just be Liquid eliminating Extreme Gaming, who took one in the group. They were nine and one, and it's all fallen apart since. Third spot Icarus dive, Supernova, Ame's dead. That's all they've written here as the throne is exposed and it is going to be Extreme Gaming eliminated in the first round after an amazing group stage. But Liquid don't care about that performance as they will take them 2-0. Uh, what a showing from Team Liquid. And they should be pretty happy about this one. 
You know, 33, he did own in the laning stage. The game slowed down for Team Liquid. He uses two splits, and every single time he used that split, the fights look pretty easy for Team Liquid. It's really crazy how it didn't look like anybody could figure out extreme gaming for most of the group stage. They didn't win a game since the last one against you guys, and now it just <laughs> they were broke. You started it. Yeah. You started it. Yeah, you, thanks, Gunner. You're gonna make Ame retire. <laughs> yes, that, that's the only reason why. <laughs> Just came back. Yeah. Um, but uh, really good showing from Liquid. I think it was. I would say it's kind of a team win, uh, where. It wasn't like they did anything special, like, oh my god, they just like outplayed them. It was just like their team played really clean in their own strategies. And if anything, I think Insania was yeah. the standout player yeah. just the whole series. For, for sure. Absolutely. Some massive rotations early on. Uh, it was probably between him and Nisha. You know, you're kind of losing this mid lane, difficult matchup. You call for a gank. Insania was so ready, kills him once comes the second time, kills him twice. They do lose an early tier one tower bottom, but it opens up the map. They kill Viper the second time, puts him in a spot where he needs to recover. He can't make any moves. They lose a tower in a mid lane and the map opens up. They start to play this top part of the map. Early Vlad's on Brewmaster, they kill a tower. And this whole area pretty much uh, is controlled by Team Liquid. They also like find an extra kill on Spectre top. And Spectre has a last pick. They didn't really feel the influence. Like, sure, when he picked up that Orchid, uh, they managed to get a couple of kills, but they also committed with the rest of the team. 24 Spectre pick. Maybe also they could have picked up. Also, he lost his something. lane yeah, pretty bad. Heavily. He got it kicked out, and Spectre doesn't want to lose his lane that bad. I thought they needed a hero to carry the Phoenix out. If they're picking Phoenix, you can't really just sacrifice your lane like that. It's almost like picking a Phoenix Morphling. You're both just going to be sad. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I think it kind of all... It, it, like, meshed together at some point in the mid-game, I think, their draft, but... There's that one fight top, and you lose one fight with that draft, and I think you just don't really have any play potential. Nothing really went right for them. They, I mean, like you guys said, Ame's kicked out of lane at level four. Everything going right for Liquid. I mean, XM had a good start to that game, and then they bullied him mid. They killed him like three times in a row. Even with that Viper start, it, it just felt like Liquid had their number. This is how it started. Highlights, you know, cooking during the draft, because they had a really strong draft. Got a stretch during the pause. This is already at the point where they got the Orchid. This is going to be the only time where it feels like Ami gets anything out of this. I would say that jump. I think XXS played really well this game. Yes. I think he was probably the one reason that this game was close uh, for the most part. Like Obviously, they all played well to like kind of come back from this like Viper having a bad lane, but his rotations of the map were really amazing. And just like kind of the work he got done, he won his lane, got really fat, and I think he kind of enabled the rest of the players to play the game, but this one fight right here. It was a, a bit disjointed, and yeah. the BKB from Mickey just means he can help kill XXS, take out this egg, and, and come out unscathed. Yeah, it just looks like there are three cores in this fight. We're all on different targets. Like, Viper's stuck in the top right. TA jumps the, the or Spectre jumps the TA at the bottom of the fight, and Primus kind of in the middle. And so, like, you lose this one fight, and it felt almost like there's nothing they could do for the rest of the game. This was also a fight into Aegis, so very nice lead read from Liquid that they can still take a fight, uh, basically five versus six, uh, five versus seven. DY used his buyback and they managed to get a full team wipe here. Man, just a, it's everything going on for Liquid. Their spell usage was perfect. Yeah, similar in the first game, right? They like play really well around each other and they know their limits as team. And you know whether it's like comms or just a like, confidence, but they're just I think they're really good at trusting each other to save each other. Whether yeah. with spells or positioning, they kind of know what they're supposed to do together. This fight really good from Boxy too. Stolen Avalanche. Yeah, Boxy was cooking throughout the whole game. You see Tiny jumping in, gets lifted immediately. Same goes for Primal pre-BKB. Uh, some stealing some big spells, Onslaught, and most importantly, Avalanche. That's the best spell pretty much that you can steal in this game. And at this point, the game was already over. And also really like the Team Liquid uh, has a good read that they can end the game. Like they go through the bottom, they know that there's no glyph, they check, there's like, okay, no one's buying back. It means that we could go for the throne. Yeah. It, it, it really just continued to do so much in that fight. I mean, even Boxy, you guys were making fun of the Rubik a little bit.